Hey everybody, welcome to the detailed tour of our automated canola factory. In part one, we ran through each phase as it takes the seed from farm to empowered oil, and we went through the process as an overview. Here in part two, we're going to go through everything in a little more nitty gritty detail. I'll show you all the machines and the flow of the setup here in survivor mode and all the different steps along the way. Be sure to check out part one of the tour so you can see the overview and the flow of how it goes from beginning to end here. You'll run into the canola quest fairly early on in your game to unlock this. In fact, let me just show you in the quest line here there's canola oil, and there's the oil generator and the fermenting barrel, and it kind of walks you through this phase. So this is pretty early on in the game here. Like, you just build basic circuits, and you know, you're going to need to make sure you get to the empower, right? But once you get to that, you can build this entire building and have yourself a really powerful fuel system early on. Okay, now that the sun's coming up, now these machines do use a little bit of power. You're probably not going to have enough by just using wind unless maybe I filled this building with windmills, which I thought about. Don't really need to put that much into it and have extra piping. I wanted to kind of keep it clean here. So you have yourself a farmer, and the farmer automatically harvests and pulls in your canola. I've put some fertile soil down below it. I think there might be more efficient soil I'll add later on, but this is how far we are in the game. And we put in a sprinkler here. To automatically water the plants boom there it goes and you got to have a water block underneath that just a regular old water block underneath it okay, and that's automatically going to pull if I drop some seeds over there it's automatically pulling things down here using the servo I set these all to whitelist and then I put in the items that it's pulling Kind of use that as an extra stop gap make sure if things are routing correctly you want you could set this to blacklist and put no items i prefer whitelist and add what i want to remove from it and i've put this here as low that way it turns on and off at the same time as the farmer kind of cool that's powered here from this kinetic dymo right but the rest of the power is coming from the rest of the farm the gasoline engine in particular right here is what's power in this building and as you can see there's some solar power over there that's also powering this building way over there routing way over here okay Let's take a look at what happens to the seeds and canola after the farmer. So that farmer drops things down here into what we have is called an item filter. This is a really powerful block. I love this thing for routing tools and routing items. You say your input is from above on this one. I've put, you know, the block is coming from above, so I put the input. And I'm saying when you receive canola in this input seed, canola seeds on this input, and you receive canola on this input, then you route these things particular directions. So I want the canola to go out the this direction, and I want the seeds to go out this direction. And what's cool about this block is it's always labeled. See, there's the N. So the S would be on that side, right? South outbound, canola, south 
down. You still need a servo though. You still need to say whitelist, pull it. Just set it to ignore. By default it's high, but set it to ignore and it automatically will pull things down into your storage. Now you're probably going to want to void upgrade on this because it's going to fill up here faster than you're going to use the canola. You're going to use the canola and oil and it sits there and, and that will hold up the farmer. So you need to make sure you put that void upgrade because otherwise you won't be pulling seeds. Okay, so let's go through the seeds first because they're more fun and that's what we did first in the overview. And then we're going to come back over here and show you the routing for the canola. So the seeds come into here, the, our item filter. They go out here. We've set the whitelist. We've set to ignore. It goes into a splitter. Now, why does it go to a splitter? Well, because I need canola seeds to convert them from phase one to phase two to crystallized. And then I'm going to need regular seeds over there at the empowerer. You know, regular seeds. So you need them in both places. So I put the splitter here, and it's automatically going to drop them off into the different directions by just setting your outputs here and correctly. Right, so the outputs are down in this direction and automatically splits them. Now underneath you put these servos. If you put them to ignore, they're going to just go and pull automatically. I've set them to these redstone here because well, I like to be able to put them on an off switch. Right, and that does pulls those. And as you can see, that's pulling the seeds through this tube here, up and over, directly into our precision dropper. You can see it show up. And it drops it. Now, there's a little bit of a setup in here, and we need to make sure we thank to Asgard because it is his video that goes over all the system build in here on how to put all these machines together, and uh, he definitely helped me figure that out. He did the video in creative mode, though. Um, so I wanted to show his build basically in survivor mode. So that's what we've done here. The mod pack we are using on the server is Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles. The goal is to get the space using green energy. Now, so when it drops the seed from the precision dropper, it hits this plate and the plate then triggers the atomic reconstructor set to pulse mode then you use a redstone torch for that so seed falls out triggers it on the pad here and then gets picked up by this item collector which we've set to a one by one uh, picks up only what's in front of it and a filter of crystallized canola seeds here so that way it only picks up the crystallized seeds so the seed comes out in here gets dropped, triggers it from the plate, gets converted, and automatically you can kind of see it go quick flash there. Being converted in here and then you see that crystallized canola. And then it's being pulled out with our servo automatically. No power needed, no redstone needed, and it goes into a storage. Now, to help so it doesn't just go crazy here, you can put a limit on this, which is cool. You use this inventory checker here, and now I've put 250. If I set this to, what do I have in here, 76? So if I set this to 25, see how it turned red? Now it's sending a redstone here to our dropper, which is set to deactivate mode. So it's deactivated, deactivated, 
when it receives a redstone because this is higher than 25, our inventory checker. So even though I may turn this on now, now you're going to just see seeds actually pile up here instead of just dropping them automatically, right? So it's, if you don't have switches, that's kind of a good spot to kind of limit how far build this build is going. Otherwise, it's just going to keep on going forever and you, you run out of space, right? So we can turn that off. And we're going to put this back a little bit higher, back to 250. See, as soon as I do that, it starts going again because don't have that many seeds. And now it's automatically going to pull those seeds here if you set this to ignore, but I have it set to high, so I have a switch. You can see it turn on and off there. Now I have it limited to two because it's going to split it. Very similar when I came over here. I have it split the five because I want it to split over here. Actually, this needs to be two. That way, whenever it pulls two seeds at a time from the farmer, and then it routes one and two. So that's see, you can see that's pulling down some of those seeds automatically here and because it's not making more because I turned it off mostly for noise now when it's turned on there it pull it's pulling seeds from above and here into this item splitter once again it splits it down here because we're going to need to convert the oil you know we need phase three oil and we need those seeds that we just converted up above right so we need to use them but we also need to convert them for the next phase as well over there into empowered seeds right crystallized seeds empowered seeds i'm going to use these seeds here on the oil and we'll get back to that in a minute I'm going to turn that on so you can see what it's doing here and it pulls it down into our item splitter and it splits it automatically and you can see here that there's seeds going in the top and to the side on the bottom and they happen at the same time as they're split. I'm going to turn that off. So I don't run out of seeds. But I'm doing that by just using a servo here. If you just set it to ignore, it's automatically going to go. Use it to high, put a switch. I've whitelisted the canola seeds, told it to pull two. You can set it to four. I'm setting it there so I don't run out of seeds here for my demo. So then it takes it and splits it off for what we need over here on our level three oil and sends them over here. No, I didn't see. I don't have any over there. That's why I have my safeties on so I can show you guys. So it pulls a bunch. automatically splits it comes over here down this item duck and it will show up over here now the other one is just routing from that first floor 
down and around to here. See, there it is. Okay, this bottom duct here, that was from that very first item splitter up there. <laughs> so that's just routing it and did this. And that way I can turn this on. When left on, system will pull seeds from storage and into the empowerer. Another item filter. Right? Now this is a little more complicated of an item filter. This is for the empowerer. This is the last phase. Seed phase three, the auto empowerer. -er. It takes four canola seeds and one crystallized seed, distributes them onto the display stands, and then will empower them. And then you have this servo here, whitelist, and when you're turned on, boom. And now those are gonna automatically go. And if you look here in our item filter, we have quite a few of these seeds we had pulled in because we forgot to turn that switch off, which is great. Before it was going input from above. Now it's from below. So the down is the input. And I'm saying when you received the crystallized canola seeds, send it straight up because straight up is my empower and since I have to route four other ones in other four directions north south west and east well there you go that's what these item ducks here with the red dots on I made them dense ones make it a little easier to see you know separate them right so that you can see the separation from the input here and then out to the different display stands right up there so it goes over here and up to another display stand over there. North, south, east, west. There you go, right? Straight up, the canola seed pops them up. Automatically, automatically empowering. This is a great setup. You can use this for empowering anything you need. I have it, uh, another one set up over there in my base. Over there in the white tower. Actually though, it's right right there, isn't it? It's right there. Um, in that p tower. Okay. So that gets us the last seeds that we need. Empowered seeds. Now, let's go back a phase to the oil. So the farmer's pulling on automatically. It's routing it to the direction of our storage. Our storage bin, a little tight here, is pulling when it has power. Uh-huh, right? Or when it doesn't by just setting to ignore and it pulls it automatically dumps it over here into our canola press I then have put the fluid duct on top for a second fermenting barrel it automatically pulls into the one next to it now had I had more space what you could do is because I'm kind of tight in space here in this building, I could have maybe, well, I guess I still could route this over here into the middle of the room. And then I could put these fermenting barrels to the different sides of it. I think that works, but we just use a fluid duct. Once it's pulled into the fermenting barrel, it gets converted from canola oil to refined canola oil. Pulls it down into a drum. And there 
there's the drum. And then use a servo, it pulls it automatically into the fluid placer. All right? Now the fluid placer has this scanner connected from X Utilities 2. And I've set it to set current block and say it so it's the refined canola oil. It has refined canola oil. Send a redstone signal. Pulse it using the sequencer. Set the loop for. And tick this over so it's basically you can see it's just pulsing. That way it doesn't do it constantly. It gives it a second to drop a C before it goes otherwise it's going to drop multiple seeds in there and, and then what are you going to do with them right especially in a setup like this you can't get to it so once that drops in there it converts it to the crystallized oil so what we're doing here is on this side you have the same thing you have another scanner this one set the crystallized oil. And when it has, it does the same thing. Enables the sequencer, and then that turns on the fluid collector. So what you're doing here is you're saying, once you've converted it to crystallized oil, tell the fluid collector, pick it up. And that picks it up and sends it down a floor for the next level. All right? Now, this could go automatically if I had it turned on without the switch, but I have this override switch here. And what that's going to do is start to pull some of these seeds down into the system. That's enough. And we can watch the magic happen. See, there it goes. And you can see this redstone triggers. Right? When it triggers, you can see that the oil is being picked up. And you can even see it's filling up that pipe back there. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now in this one, I have the precision dropper going down from below. Redstone mode pulse for that one. Same thing with the fluid collector. You want it on pulse. It says dropper, but it's actually pushing it up, which is fine. It works great, right? Converts it, pulls it, and the oil is then pulled down here, one more floor below. Here into this stone drum, there's the crystallized oil, right? Servo pulls it down. Same setup here for the system four, right? The last phase fills our tank with the crystallized oil from phase three above. And then the empowered seed is dropped in, and bam, empowered oil. Same thing set up right here. You know, comes down with the servo into the fluid placer, drops our fluid, is sensed. Whoop, that's the empowered one. Now, this one. Now this one I wanted the dropper from above for just from routing purposes. It made it a lot easier and shorter to run the drop it from above, right? So you have to kind of find your way on the build. So here's the scanner, right? Oil. You can see it sending our redstone signal into our sequencer. You know, loop four. I even added an extra delay to slow it down. And then that redstone goes over here to this wire connector and up to the top for the precision dropper. And it will do that as soon as I give it some seeds. We only have a few here, so that's why we save some. And bam, there it goes, right? Pretty cool, pretty cool. 
right? And then the empowered oil, right? Senses it, tells the sequencer, wire stone connector, fluid collector, fluid collector picks up the empowered oil and puts it into a drum. And then I'm pulling that into a larger drum. Won't fill up anytime soon. <laughs> and then we're going here in the oil generator. In the oil generator, look at that. This is the most efficient fuel early game you can get. Since I'm trying to get to space we're using green energy, figured this would be a great system to add what the power does. Then it actually feeds the entire system back, right? Because this is the this is the battery that feeds up and feeds the rest of the feeds everything. And then it routes it out also here into the gasoline and pipe. So I will add more canola oil generators over here and probably eventually add some more gasoline energy going on over here. This is a whole nother video for you guys on an automated gasoline setup. But in the meantime, that is oil phase four empowered oil from beginning to end fully automated built entirely in survivor mode I think it's a pretty nice setup I think it's nice in this building it looks pretty good you know yes there's pipes everywhere that's kinda how it goes to get your fully functional automated canola farm up and running gonna need to build a lot of machines put this little clipboard together here with some of the machines that you are gonna need to build you need a farmer a canola press a couple item filters four display stands and the empower for the empowerment station um, from phase phase two seeds you need the atomic reconstruction reconstructor atomic reconstructor uh, I fractioning still I might use Still, I built one, haven't placed it yet. You need, of course, the oil generator. You're going to need three precision droppers. Going to need two inventory checkers, two fluid placers, two fluid collectors, a couple sequencers from RF tools, four scanners from Extra Utilities 2. You're going to want a sprinkler for your farm. You need a couple of storage drums for your liquids, in the different phases, and your final one. I ended up with three of these. You're going to need an item collector for the seeds. You need a ton of servos. I counted it maybe at least 21, 22 or more. Um, you're going to want a pressure plate for the atomic reconstructor couple item splitters there for routing a few storage drawers oh I added some more more servos um, a bunch of void upgrades maybe maybe at least two you need at least two void upgrades right and that's not even mentioning all the power conduits item ducts and fluid ducts you're gonna need thanks for coming along on our tour of our canola power plant here in survivor mode this has been a really fun build, and I hope it's helped you on your own build as well. Be sure to check out the links in the description here for part one of this video, as well as the video from To Asgard. I do hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Casually Surviving Minecraft. My name is Red, the Casual Gamer. If you guys enjoy playing video games at a casual place, Maybe click the buttons below. You know which ones they are. Have a great day, everybody. Happy building. We'll see you next time.